I think like conversations like this are why I think there's still a, a big benefit in, in talk therapy. Like I think mm-hmm. recently with um, psychedelics and other things, we're, we're realizing that talk therapy has a lower ceiling for mm-hmm. efficacy than, than we thought in the past. And I think a lot of these different modalities will, I think, help talk therapy in, in, in the future. But it's something like this to think if someone has wronged you in such a profound way and then... You, you, and you're trying to forgive, like you're trying to have empathy, like let's take the bullying. So you're going to say, you know what, I know this kid or whatever came from a really shit family. So mm-hmm. if he's acting like that, his, his, his upbringing must have been a complete uh, nightmare. And then, but then there's that element of the, you still don't want to dismiss your own pain. No, of because I not. think I, I think that's a bad habit moving forward through life. When anytime someone hurts you, you're like, oh, but something happened mm-hmm. to them when they were younger. You're like, yeah, okay. If 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 I go into a, a dark alley in whatever city and I get stabbed, it doesn't matter that the stabber had an abusive father. Like exactly. I'm still bleeding here. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and, and and let's note, and this is such a controversial thing that that comes up like on college campuses. If they're saying, let's say to a young woman on a college campus, you know, there's some dark alleys you probably shouldn't go in, and everybody gets upset and says, Oh my god, you're blaming the victim. No, you're not. But you're also right. recognizing you, you know you're going to have to give some thought to the realities out there. It's It wouldn't be morally your fault if somebody attacked you any more than it was morally your fault to be bullied. But right. knowing what you now know, there's some dark alleys you should probably avoid or be well-armed when you go there, you know? Sure. And, so, and if you're not, that part's on you. That doesn't mean you're morally responsible for somebody doing something flat out immoral, but it yeah. does mean you need to use your judgment. And it's interesting because when you actually get to that place of forgiving, It doesn't make you less safe. It actually makes you think more clearly. That's why I I keep going back to that example of the woman with her ex-husband. She was under, you know, the fact that she could say, well, you know, she could even, once she was able to forgive him, she could even remember good times she had with him because there were some good times. Yeah, I think think that's something that I learned through. I think about this often. And so really long story short, I did a session of MDMA assisted therapy. And ah. through that, I was able to process the uh, the death of my, both my grandparents, whom both of which I was very, very, very close with. And in that um, process, I realized I got back a lot of the love that I that mm-hmm. I feel like I didn't even know that I had cauterized in my mind and all these memories started coming back. And what I had realized was that my brain somehow had a defense mechanism that to protect myself from the pain. Of course. It didn't just it didn't just turn off the pain. It turned off all of the love and the connection and the sweetness and all of the appreciation they had for me. Like all of that I didn't have access to anymore. Yeah. Because you were too busy now, grieving. That's right. Yeah. Totally to, well yeah. or I should have been. Or you, you should, know and, exactly and, and, better. And better and so yeah. I think about that now often that like let's say someone goes through a uh, a traumatic relationship or just a really terrible one. Um, and I don't think it's really hard because you don't want to lose the love that you had for that person, which, yep. you know, maybe it was the first six months or the first five years or, or whatever. But if the last part of that relationship was so, so terrible, it's like what Danny McKineman, Daniel Kahneman says that the, rem- the remembering self is a big part of the experience of the, uh, of you know a big part of the experience that you'll that you'll remember and mm-hmm. so yeah I, I think that's a great point to make that like even if someone hurt you you don't want to lose the love that was still part of it and you can still exercise your discernment around the uh the betrayal yes it, precisely and and that actually seems to me in your example such a great one you know to be able to in effect now i'm i'm uh, I don't mean to uh, superimpose terminology you didn't say, but it's like I can almost say you sort of forgave your grandparents for dying. Do you know what I mean? In that sense. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like. No, no. That's a great analogy. Yes. Yes. But obviously it wasn't a moral thing, but in terms of, well, they abandoned you, you know, (laughs) they didn't mean to. Actually, you know what, to to yeah. uh, to certify your point, a friend of mine who also did uh, psychedelic therapy around the same time as me, um, he came out that he had so much, his, his mother had died of cancer when he was young. Mm-hmm. And um, and he was so angry at her mm-hmm. for, for leaving him. And he, he's an adult. He's a 40-year-old successful man. Mm-hmm. And he didn't realize that so much anger was like directly at her because he knew like she didn't choose to have cancer. She didn't choose to, to leave him. Sure. So there was an exercising of the demons of that. Like you're just angry and you want someone to blame. 